<laughs> ding, you just ding, call me a dink ding, kiss. I dinked you a kiss. Dink, dink. No, suck it back. Yeah. <laughs> dink, dink. <laughs> Welcome back to the Jen Julian Podcast, hey. everybody. The special almost Valentine's Day edition. Speaking of Valentine's Day, guys, it's right around the corner. And you know what? You don't have to panic. You can get your heart on. Don't panic. And show some love. Don't panic. With matching me undies. We have matching just ones. Just for Valentine's Day. Me undies always is the best. Uh, they always send us matching me undies. But these, these are the most important oh. matching me undies because they are the Valentine's Day edition. They have a whole collection. Right now you get free shipping and 20% off your first order when you go to meundies.com slash Jenna Julian. Check it out. Oh. They are sexual. The other sponsor this week is The Skim. Skim. Guys, there's so much confusing stuff going on in the world. Too many news stories, too much to catch up on. That's where the skim comes in. They help you stay in the know on important topics like Beyonce being pregnant with twins, twins, all sorts of things like that, that you don't want to have to dig for. The skim does it for you and it pops up in your email every morning. Very helpful. Right now, go to the skim. Dot com. That's the skim with two N's. Sorry, M's. two M's. <laughs> <laughs> the S K I M M dot com slash Jenna Julian. Enter your email, clips, click subscribe, and then then you're done. That's it. That's it. That's, that's it. all we want you to do. <laughs> Please it. do that. And that's it. Uh, you could also be entered to win a $250 uh, Visa gift card. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. And I mean, honestly, though, like, I, I guess I don't think about it often because MeUndies is so great to us. But, like, well, what other place can you buy matching his and hers underwear? Nowhere. <laughs> really, though. It's, it's I have true. this pair on right now. Do you really? Yeah. Which pair do I have on? As my... a oh, thong. I think these are the other As Valentine's a th- Day. Oh, my God. God, this is a butt shot. This is now a peep show. Uh, what? Yeah, I think that's the one I have on. You know, that's actually a really good point. See, look yeah, at you it. are wearing this one. I can confirm it, guys. She's wearing this one. Ooh, um, it's a thong. I've actually never thought about that. Me, like, a thong. It's like you go into Victoria's Secret and find men's briefs to match whatever you're buying. Okay, that would be fucking lit. But Victoria's me, this is already doing it. Yeah, that's true. This, Anyways. I mean, this. It's, it's, man, I don't even realize, like, I looked in my drawer the other day, all I have is me and Like, I have just an entire drawer full of me and it's, it's the funny you say that because world. I just realized the same thing about me the other day, really? too. Yeah. About me? Me and me. Uh, wow. Anyways. Anyway. Um, so that's it. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> thank you for subscribing. Unsubscribe now. Goodbye. Um, all right. I have a quick quiz question for you. A quick random trivia question what? that you have to answer on the spot. What? What does it say in, in Cupcake's Twitter bio? Marilyn Monroe. What is the bile? Uh, is it I'm gonna suck two hundred or twenty seventeen <laughs> dicks in twenty seventeen? Correct, you passed. Yeah, wait, I wasn't prepared for this. I quiz, know that's but... a random trivia quiz. We're adding that to the podcast from now on. Oh, we're adding pop quizzes. Pop quiz questions, not pop whole entire video. quizzes. Do you remember Just... pop up video, Julian? Do I remember what pop up video? Can you? You were too young. Further, maybe I do. So on VH1, they used to play. At that at that point, like older music videos, like maybe a couple of years old, and like videos that everybody loved, but they would have these little pop up speech bubbles that would tell you facts about. Oh the video. yeah, yeah yeah, I remember that. Pop it was, video. was it, they popped up in a similar fashion and to like how bubble on, noise, like, whoop. similar fashion to how on Blind Date those things would pop up about what they're thinking. Whoop. Yeah. All right, give me some credit here. I just whoop. dropped a Blind Date reference. All right, whoop. I'm not that young. Ooh, speaking of Blind Date, wrong. I'm not that young. <laughs> We address that for one second. Right. Julian's wearing a Von Dutch hat right now, which I loved. I was in college or like late high school, early college when Von Dutch was like a thing. And Julian just started watching The Simple Life for the first time ever. Great show. You guys should check it out. Right <laughs> He's like, I love all their Von Dutch stuff. So he ordered himself okay. a Von Dutch can hat, we... which if I remember correctly, Von Dutch was expensive. Oh, yeah. so can, can we, can we not like... frame this in a way of like, I discovered Von Dutch through The Simple Life? Like, I wore Von no, Dutch I know, too. I know, I know. Okay. Uh, yeah, so was, that, that, that shit hat was, was like, like 20 bucks now, right? Yeah, I bought this on Amazon guys, for 20 Guys, major bucks. key Amazon Prime. Wait 10 years. Wait till it's completely out of style and <laughs> no one wants it. And then you get it for cheap. Like, how cheap can you buy FUBU at this? Fight. Oh, Fubu. Okay, be careful. They're on the level of Supreme still. I mean, they're an Just empire. Just wait ten years for Supreme. Uh, yeah, exactly. You guys want some Supreme hoodies, uh, and you don't want to pay two thousand dollars? Just wait Yeezys. ten years. Yeezys. Wait ten yeah. years. I mean, do you remember how, how ridiculous those Kobe Moon shoes were? Yeah, those were the Yeezys. Everyone wanted those and paying ridiculous prices. And now look at them. Where are they at? 
I don't know. But I feel like a, an exception to that, especially in the sneakers, like Jordans are always expensive. Well, Jordans they have are always kind been of timeless. expensive and they probably will always be expensive. The Jordan brand has done a really good job of kind of transcending the, the, the fucking trends. They kind of just yeah. are timeless or Jordans. They've, you know, they're, they're classics. I don't know how else to say it. And, and sometimes classic kind of groups it into like a, oh, they're old school, but classic in a sense that like even young kids want to wear them still. Yeah. How much money do you think Michael Jordan has? Right from now, sneakers like on alone. him, from sneakers alone, uh, thirty-two thousand dollars on him, probably. <laughs> <laughs> from sne- I mean, he's built a crazy empire. I don't know, billions of dollars, probably. Yeah, probably. It's a shoe empire. It's like it. It's been the most dominant brand in shoes. Sneakers, sneakers. I mean, sneakers. Sorry, not fashion. Like you know, women's stuff. But I don't know. I, I, I'm not the guy to ask. I'm just speculating. But Julian, I <clears> like <throat> your Von Dutch hat. Thank you. I think it's funny. Okay, I was I, I was sort of going for funny, but I'll take it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't care. It's comfortable as shit. I got it. She had to sign for it, by the way. I did. Okay, I was at the house, and you know, whenever the mailman needs me to sign for something, it's a little stressful when I'm here alone because the dogs are like going crazy at the door. When Julian's here, they're not as bad at the door, but like if he's not here, they're so fucking like out of control because they're protecting me which i appreciate yeah because i'm but it not takes there. like five minutes for me to wrangle them into the office so that i can open the door and i signed for this light feeling package and i'm like what is this and mind you julian gets packages all the time because he's a true millennial and literally never shops in Whoa. person and orders like everything on amazon prime which makes a lot of sense but like i don't do that as much as you do but julian gets a package to the house all the time so i'm like what the fuck is this shit i have to sign for right now I'll go, Julian, there's a package for you on the stairs. He opens it. And it's a fucking Von Dutch hat. I had to sign for a Von Dutch hat. Julian, stop M- tipping your cap. My Von Dutch? <laughs> my Duchess? I used to have a pair of, of jeans that said Von Dutch across the, the back. Were they, they real so or fake, cute. though? No, they were real. They were real. I remember See, how I remember much they having, cost. I remember they having, were $98. I remember having fake Von Dutch it was hats. So, they were the most expensive thing I owned. We had fake Von Dutch hats because my mom was like, you guys are fucking idiots and you're not going to pay money, like 70 bucks for a hat. Sorry. You can have $15 and find one at the gas station. And so we did. We had fake Von Dutch hats and they were the best thing That's ever. That's lit. Because you could you, tell. You remember the ones that said like Von Bitch and shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those were a little too edgy for me. <laughs> You didn't want a Von Bitch hat. No, I couldn't pull it off. <laughs> it would be way funnier if you're wearing a Von Bitch hat right now. <laughs> like 10 years later, <laughs> yeah. just Von Bitch. Maybe I, that okay, should be my next Amazon Prime purchase. Please order a Von Bitch hat. Order it for me. Valentine's Day is coming no. up. Oh, you're going to name me undies. That's right. No, I'm not ordering you a Von Bitch hat because I'm going to have to sign for it. So? I don't want to sign for a Von Bitch hat. What, it's not worth it. What would have been worse, though, is if your mom was here watching the dogs and she had to sign for the Von Dutch hat. Von Bitch hat. She would have appreciated the Von. Oh, my God. Anyways. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we wanted to do a Dreamcast. So today is the Dreamcast. You Sega guys have been, Dreamcast. You guys have been asking for it forever. That was a good one. Thank you. That was good. Um, you guys have been asking for this for a really long time, and we've been wanting to do it for a long time, but we are finally doing it. We have, we each have a dream, a pretty good dream that we wrote down very close to when we had the dream. Uh, and we, ha- you haven't revisited it since. No. So I haven't really revisited mine since, although mine's more predictable and I kind of sort of remember it. Hers is a lot more in depth. Um, but for the first half, we wanted to kind of get into some common dreams and what they mean, just to give a little subtext to when we get into the dreams, mm. right? Yeah, mine. mine's not any of these. When I wrote mine, I like, <clears throat> you know how, well, you tell me, if you've ever had one of these dreams where you wake up and you're like, oh my God, it's like life changing. Like you think it's fucking profound yes. because in, in your dream, it could just be like you digging in a garden. But, but the you're residual like, feeling of it yeah, being you're profound like, is real. Oh my God, I know how the universe works yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah. So this was one of those dreams. And this was before we had the idea of doing a dream cast. Yeah. I woke up with this burning sensation of like, I have to write down everything that I remember. Like, to relay this message verbatim. to the people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I like 
sort of lucidly wrote it, like I'm half asleep, half awake, and I'm falling asleep as I'm writing it, but I'm just really trying my best to get it all in there. And then after I finished writing it, it's long. I fell right back asleep, and yeah. then I promised myself I Never wouldn't to look, look at, at until it the streamcast. until we did something like this yeah. with well, it. Well, then I think it's going to be dope. Well, I'm like a little kind of, scared to read it now. Like what if you? What months. if you're just going to unleash the secret of the universe right now? No, the, the meaning of life. No, it's called YouTube. I think because I literally just pulled it up. In my, yeah, it's called YouTube. Ooh, I hope there's some tea. <laughs> I don't think there's any tea. In <laughs> I want it. there to be tea. Um, okay. Yeah, well, speak, speaking of tea, um, tea falling out oh, in your my dreams. God, Julian, it's really unnecessary. Uh, <laughs> are often viewed by experts as a symbol of confidence. Um, so. Teeth, sorry, I, teeth are v- teeth just by themselves are viewed as a symbol of confidence. So when they're falling out in dreams, that can mean that something has happened to a person in their life to lose confidence. I know I, I've never really had the teeth loss dream, but this was apparently one of the most common. I have. Ones. I yeah. had a dream one time that my boobs were made out of silly putty. And every time I squeezed them, my fingerprints would be in them. Oh, that sounds fun. <laughs> it was very like fun. Like a bag of sand. It was. <laughs> um, so teeth falling out can also represent a bad omen in a relationship that you're in a bad relationship. I always thought that teeth falling out was like good luck. No, like in dreams or in general? Yeah. No, in dreams. Oh. Somebody told me that or I read that somewhere. The last thing I found on teeth falling out is it's linked to sexual wish fulfillment. Mm. So if your teeth are falling out in your dreams, basically it's kind of like waking up to the fact that like you should pay attention to this sexual desire that you have that you're not fulfilling. Mm. Um, anyway, that doesn't really apply to me. Uh, falling. I feel like a lot of people have had falling dreams. Yeah. I know I've de- definitely had falling dreams. So falling dreams can mean a whole array of things. Um, at first, what I found is it's a red flag from your subconscious. Basically, it's common in people who are having major life problems, major work problems or social problems, uh, or in their relationship, they're having problems, uh, a falling sensation can can be attributed to those problems. Also, it can be attributed to people with depression, which I completely understand. Uh, anxiety, an excess of caffeine, and a physical discomfort while you're sleeping can all also mm. contribute to a falling dream. And I, at first, when I was researching, I was like, I've had a lot of falling dreams, and I remember all of them very distinctly. And I'm I'm not having a major life problem, I don't think. I imagine most of my falling dreams are just purely attributed to anxiety and, and or caffeine. And caffeine. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. When I saw the caffeine Although I thing, cut down I like, on my caffeine so much. Yeah, you did. It was good. Yeah. Um, I've been having a lot of discomfort while I sleep, but that's just been because of my shoulder. Right. And I think that's that would be why. Anyway. I haven't. I've been comfortable as fuck. I know. I miss I miss being able to sleep on my left side. I can't sleep on my left I side know. right now. Uh, showing of the car accident. Yeah. Showing up to work or school. Naked. naked. I've never had one of these. You haven't? Never had yeah, one. It's terrible. I've I I've showed up to a baseball game naked. <laughs> in your dream? Yeah. Late and naked. Late, okay, late in, kid. in real life though, the other day, I walked downstairs without any pants on and was like, I feel like I'm forgetting something. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> it was just bottomless. <laughs> so was it really on. necessary for him to walk outside bottomless? I mean, well, you know when you're like doing something and I was like I had my head in like twelve different places, like yeah. trying to get ready, and then I just like made it halfway down the stairs and I like looked at my legs and I was like Oh, for fuck's sake. There's a bunch of windows everywhere. I know. We do. Uh, All right. Uh, Going to school or work naked indicates a feeling of vulnerability or anxiety common for people who have recently started a new job Mm -hmm. or gone to a new school or uh, potentially had a promotion. So there, there's more responsibility on them in this new position. They're, they're more in the public eye, uh, whether it's just within a company or group of people or actually within the public eye. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's that. Test taking in your dreams. I've never had that. Oh my God. That sounds awful. Have you had that? No. Okay. Yeah. I haven't either. Uh, it's a reminder for a person to stay alert. Uh, for adults, it means that they're finding a link between their work and what school was like. Um, and it can also just be an indication of a lot of pressure in your life. Man, what a waste of fun dream time. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? When I used to work like at, um, day camps and, I was a camp counselor and mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. I used to have so many dreams that I was at work or like late for work or that I was already working, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. I would wake up and I was like, oh my God, I've been at work I'm for there. three hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 
I always figured in softball too, or like in school, I'd have dreams that I'm already in class or like, I got to make it to class. Can we talk about that for a second? Because Because I feel like that happens when you're stressed about your job, like whatever your current job is, when like you, not even your dreams are safe from how stressed out you are about your work. So this brings me back to my bartending days. Yeah. You'd have dreams of your bartending. I had the worst bartending nightmares. Yeah. Like that. I was, I was asleep behind the bar and it would happen because the thing about bartending, as you know, but a lot of bartending gigs, you get off at like three or four in the morning Mm -hmm. and then you go right to sleep. And so I didn't. Well, I did. I had to like unwind. You're like wound. Like when I would go go dance, no, like, like yeah, on, I would need like an hour to go home and like I, lay I absolutely down. agree with that. Well, you need to wind down. But sometimes like so some shifts I would I would bartend the Saturday or Friday night and then the next morning I had an, a radio shift. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't really hang out. So I would normally go to sleep within an hour or so after getting off work and it was always that just like immediate nightmare of like, you're still at work. People are waiting on you to serve them drinks. Nobody's going to tip you. You're going to get fired. Yeah. What are you doing sleeping behind the bar? Where where have you been? And it, it wasn't like, it, it was probably the most powerful recurring nightmare I've ever had in my life. Mm-hmm. So if any of you guys are bartenders, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. But what's weird is I then would go to my radio job and my radio job consisted of board hopping, which was basically being responsible for my entire radio station staying on the air. And if you think about that, that's a lot of pressure. And so I had similar dreams to the bartending ones for that job. Mm. I would be like, oh, I'm at the board op. We've got we've been off the air. There's dead air for like 10 minutes. I'm going to get fired. I'm going to get like in so much trouble. And it was just a dream. And it happened over and over and over again. Those, just, those were yeah. the worst dreams I've ever had. I know. I had them less about bartending and more about when I was a camp counselor. Well, because it's such a like, social environment. Well, yeah. And also like when, when I was a camp counselor, there's like always the pressure. Like I always had a really large group. I always had at least 10 kids yeah and like you you know you like you love them like they're your kids you know by the end of the summer like you know them so well like their parents ask you to come babysit on the weekends you guys grow such a close bond or you know them for years and i feel like you have such a like a motherly responsibility that they wake me up in the middle of the night you know because you're like thinking of them yeah it's a powerful it's a powerful feeling you know yeah but then when i stopped then i didn't have them anymore (laughs) I know. Ever since bartending stopped and board offing stopped, I haven't had that that sort of dream right? ever. Yeah. yeah. Man, those were wild. Yeah, they're really because I remember. Really I remember stressful. like that's like a nice stressful night of sleep. Well, because I remember I would like wake up some days and I'd sit up and I'd be like, I can see that person waiting for a drink, and you're like, wait, no, that's a lamp. It's like, oh, I'm asleep. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. it's so real. Um, okay, dying. Uh, have you died in a dream before? I haven't died, but I mean, I've had a lot of things where I think I die and then yeah. I wake up. I've gotten really close to dying and I always wake up. Um, dying in a dream reveals the wish to end or terminate something in your life, not your life totally. Um, so whether a job, career path, or even past experiences or decisions are sort of dogging you, uh, dying in a dream is like you trying to get rid of it. You trying to kill it off of your life. Um, it can also uh, be an encouraging sign for someone to embark on something new. Tight. Yeah. For like a year or so, I had recurring nightmares of drowning in different ways Mm. over and over and over again. It was really tight. Yeah. Just kidding. It wasn't. I fucking hated it. That sounds brutal. Right? Yep. Um, Meeting a celebrity. So oftentimes, oh, I had one of those the other night. Yeah, so Seth MacFarlane was on a plane across the road from me, and then our plane went down, but we didn't die. And then he confronted me in the airport and said, "Why do you keep giggling at me when I when you when I look at you?" And I was like, "Oh, it's just because I have a big crush on you." I got in a car accident in front of Steve Carell's house <laughs> before in my dream. <laughs> uh, so as as random as it might seem. Research indicates that the actual celebrity is relevant to the person dreaming about them. So even if you dream true, about so true you, in both cases, yes, exactly. <laughs> so you think it's random at first, but really there's no, there are normally ties that celebrity has to your life or your thought process or whatever. Um, celebrities are all a symbol of personal need for recognition. So this may also be why uh, your celebrity is in a dream. So if mm. you feel like you wish that you were recognized more in your life or whatever. Or maybe you're like obsessed with the show and you just want them to notice you. Yeah, I think that's it. It's like, notice me, senpai. I think it's just like being obsessed with someone. They show up in your dream. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Uh, So embarrassing. Being chased. 
Uh, despite the scary feel of this dream, it can be considered by some as a positive sign. Uh, it often encourages the dreamer to finally face a problem or a decision in their life that they've been putting off uh, that's been hanging over the head and they know that they should face. So sometimes this dream is meant to like give them that little push, mm. deal with it, you know. I don't have many chasing dreams. The only ch- the only chasing dreams I have and I can remember, I'm more fixated on the fact that I can't run fast. Mm. Um, but I'm not really ever being chased. Mm. It's more sports. <laughs> <laughs> can't run in sports. <laughs> that sucks. That's the worst. Wait, so you're like you're playing baseball and you just hit like a bomb out to center field and you like can't make it to you, first? You can't. Oh, brutal. You can't. And this <laughs> happened a lot for me when I was training to like play in college and go to um, showcases and yeah. stuff where you would have your four, your 60 yard dash time. You would mm-hmm. have all these things timed. I would have dreams that like I, I was so ready to kill it. And then as soon as they blew the whistle, I was like, I couldn't move. And yeah. it was, oh, I hated that. That sucks. Hated that. Uh, partner is cheating. Most experts agree that this dream shouldn't be taken as clairvoyance. The cheating dream can happen when a partner is spending lots of his or her time on something or someone that isn't you. So whether it's a hobby, friends, work, whatever, if it's something that's not that person, they can have that dream because the attention that their partner is being uh, is giving is not on them. But it can also mean you don't have trust in your partner. Those are two, the two things. I don't think I've ever had one of those. I have. Of me? Yeah, I've told you about it though. What was it? I don't even remember. I just know I've had it. I honestly don't remember. I think I woke up and I was, <sighs> I was like, that's so sad. I was Otter. like sad, and you like gave me a hug. And you're like, what's wrong? And I was like, you kissed someone. <laughs> 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 ah! But it's like yeah, I remember it being so stupid and random, and then I told you about it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of these things can also just be very random. I right? think so too. Um, anyway. Scooting on, showing up late to something. I've definitely had this. Dream. Yeah, lots of those. Uh, indicates a person is overwhelmed and potentially doing too much. Doing the most, fam. Doing the most. Uh, it could also be an indication of uh, warning not to make promises that you can't keep. Mm. Which is true. I have like a, I'm almost allergic to being late. I hate being late. I know. So I think I've had these dreams because of that. Yeah. Flying. Like actually flying through the air, not falling. I feel like I've had a couple of those. Not too many. Not as many as I'd like. How did it feel? Like you jumped off a ledge and you just didn't fall? You were just... No. Well, I had one the other night, but I was in an airplane. I have airplane dreams. Oh, airplane. Yeah. You don't like airplanes. I hate planes. I don't like flying. Well, flying encourages a person to let go of certain issues and allow things in their life to fall naturally into place. So basically, we just chill the fuck out. Flying is a sign that there is... Uh, it's sort of an out of control situation. Mm-hmm. You you are you have no control of what's My happening. Life. Just let it go. My life. Yeah, being preggers. This dream can also be uh, preggers, Julian. Preggers. <laughs> Vaughn preggers. <laughs> <laughs> it can be viewed as a need oh. to start a creative po- project or potentially become a parent. Um, it also says that this dream is common in someone who's recently entertained the idea of actually being pregnant. Then they'll have a dream. That Julian, do you have dreams that you're pregnant? Only on Wednesdays. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't. <laughs> do you? No, not that I know of. Well, not that it would I can be pretty remember. fucking weird if I had a dream I was pregnant, right? That's what I'm saying. Is this like gender specific or do men have dreams that they're pregnant too? I've never had that dream, but I'm sure men have had that dream that are not me as no. <laughs> me as no. <laughs> me as no. Mm. All right. Last one. Driving an out of control vehicle. Uh, very straightforward. <laughs> you don't have enough control in your life or the path that you're on. Uh, and... You can be developing a, a bad habit that may not be big at the time, but it could really bite you in the ass down the line. Mm. I don't have any of those. Like driving out of control? No, I can't recall too many dreams that I have in a car. It's hard. I drowned in a car one time during that year when I couldn't stop dreaming about drowning. In your dream? Oh, I was like, I was in a, in a car? I was in a tunnel, like going through a tunnel underground in a car. And all of a sudden, the whole thing caved in, and everybody in the tunnel drowned. Oh, my God. Yeah, I had a ton of those dreams. Imagine if a tunnel was filled with water. It goes underground, babe. Yeah, but imagine if it leaked, and then suddenly the tunnel was That's just... That's what happened, sh- yeah. No, but like IRL. It's happened before. Where? When? I don't know, but it happens. That's weird. 
because I read the skim and I didn't read anything about it. Oh my God, Julian! I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? You and your segues. Guys, there's a lot of confusing things <laughs> happening in the world, and sometimes they're not that great, but you still need to know about them. And it can be very difficult to have to skim through <laughs> news sites and subscriptions and nonsense on the internet. What the skim does is they get it all ready for you. They have it nice and tidy and packed up real good for your eyes to just feast on and then be smarter instantly. Uh, they serve up the news very fast and with style and no BS. Uh, it's delivered to my email inbox every single morning and it's free guys yeah, so if you have a job where you can't sit and maybe watch a video or something you can get the skim it's, it's and just great. read it quietly at your desk it's all the, what you Pretend need to know like without working. any of the fluff yeah. and you know what I, I could just end this pitch by saying that oprah uses the skim and hey. then you basically just are almost like le legally bound to go download it <laughs> <laughs> right now you can get onto the skim.com slash Jenna Julian. That's the skim with two M's.com slash Jenna Julian. Enter your email, click subscribe. That's simple. And then you are subscribed. You will be in the know every single morning. Uh, the skim makes it easier to know what's up. So sign up right now and it's free. And, it's free. and when you sign up using our URL, the skim two M's.com slash Jenna Julian, you are entered for a chance to win a $250 Visa gift card, which you can spend solely on fresh squeezed orange juice like I would. <laughs> Thank you to this game. So also this doing. week, me, Undies, Valentine's Day is next week, guys, February 14th, but you don't have to panic because me, Undies has you covered. Get your match at me, Undies. Guys, get your heart on right Hell now yeah. with some me, Undies, matching Undies. Uh, they... We showed you. We did a whole fashion show at the beginning of the podcast. So if you want to see uh, our, our butts wearing underwear, or my butt wearing underwear, just rewind the podcast. Or you can go onto the MeUndies site and all their social media. They have plenty of butts and underwear. And they're unbelievably soft. They're made of modal fabric that's three times softer than cotton. And with this special limited edition Valentine's print, it means you and your Valentine can match on the special day and have fun. In and out of your meandies. Naughty! <laughs> um, if you and your meandies aren't a perfect match, then they'll give you your money back and let you keep the first pair. But it's not going to happen because you're going to love them. Right now, head to meandies.com slash Jenna Julian for 20% off your first order. That's meundies, M-E-undies.com slash Jenna Julian. 20% off your first order and free shipping. Get it right now so you have it for the love day mm -hmm. coming up. And they last a long time. I don't think I've thrown out a pair yet or nope. had to. And I've definitely thrown out underwear before that ripped on me. You have to throw out underwear eventually. No, I thought you always Never? keep it. Never? So you've had the, the same underwear since when you were a kid? No, because they're not me at these. <laughs> oh, my God. No, but you've seen. Like, my underwear rips way too fast. And then I got me at these and it doesn't happen. <laughs> His underwear was a mess, man. All right, stop doing that. It doesn't even rip. Mm. All right. So now we're going to go through your one of your dreams. Me too. I'm like genuinely curious, but like I, I have to read this. It's my only choice. You don't get to read it to yourself first. You have to read it out I'm, loud. I'm going to read it out loud. Yeah, so the date on this is, oh my God, July 11th, 2016 at 7.50 a.m. Holy fuck. Okay. Hit us with this. Hit us. I don't know if I'm ready. I'm Hit like scared. Truth, I feel girl. vulnerable. Ugh. Okay. Just remember, if you don't like anything you say, we won't bleep any of it out. <laughs> okay. Right, so I, I literally just wrote YouTube. And some of this might be broken in English. I don't remember what I yeah, was writing. Yeah, of course. Okay. And this could be the stupidest dream ever. I don't know. No more no more uh, disclaimers. Just get into okay. it. Okay. All right. So the first paragraph says, always murmurs about what happens to people that disappear from online that they get like reset. <laughs> <laughs> that there's this room where we are being somehow controlled. I was staying at this official VidCon inn. It was weird and dank and gross, and I was at VidCon. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Keep going. Okay. For some reason, everyone that worked there, who were all very bizarre, kept sort of screwing with me. We had a, quote, event the first day, which mostly consisted of, like, a gift suite. That was my thing to do that day and, like, walk around the convention like we did this past year. No one wanted to say hi to me. Gabby literally said, Gabby, Gabby Cho, <laughs> Gabby literally said, wow, you look dot, 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 and shook her head and scoffed. 
<laughs> That's funny because I just got a text message and it was Gabby. Really? Just yeah, now. On the podcast? Yeah, did you hear that ding? It was Gabby. Okay. Anyways. Um, I did look like I rolled out of bed. I had regular leggings, t-shirt, beanie on. I thought I looked all right, but she wasn't entirely wrong. I just felt like she only looked up from her phone to scoff at me (laughs) and didn't have time to talk to me. I was pretty upset. Okay. I walked around the event and no one wanted me there. Everyone had already had it. I felt so unwelcome, like I should just leave. They literally shut one of the booths so that I wouldn't be there and go back to my room. Okay. I went back to my room and after barely being there, I asked the front desk why no one wanted me there and what I was doing there. And she said I was rude and demanding and no one wanted to be around me. (laughs) My mom was there. My stepmom was there. (laughs) Kermit was there. Gabby, Rome, and Julian were all there for some reason. Just Kermit. (laughs) Kermit's Kermit's actually in a lot of my dreams. Just Kermit alone. You knew him in a past life. Yeah, me and him are like on another spiritual level. Okay. They were doing whatever they wanted to me and no one with me would really listen to me. I don't exactly remember what they kept doing. I just remember being beyond my breaking point. Like it was so outrageous. I couldn't handle it anymore. At one point I was literally screaming and not at a single person uh, would hear me as I tried to explain why this was so wrong. We were at some loud ga- gathering in this inn's really British, homely sort of looking lobby. We didn't even go out Friday night. I debated not even going to my meet and greet the next day. I debated just getting a new hotel and not staying at this one because I hated it so much. The floor was literally rotting out in places and I kept getting lost and everyone kept making fun of me for it. They were calling me a diva and princess, which irritated me to no end. There were so many rooms and so many people in this inn. I was so confused how it was working and what its layout was. I asked someone at the inn why they didn't like me when in years past they always had. He cackled at me and said, I have three videos. He shows me the first one from like 2012. My hair was short. I looked almost unrecognizably young and the inn members made workers make workers were yelling drunk at VidCon party around me. I don't know what that sentence means. They were all much taller than me, grabbing me by my waist, hugging me in, yelling, and like kissing and licking my face at the camera. I was waiting for my response, nervous because I didn't recall this particular incident, when I saw that I did exactly what I always did. I was polite and smiled and acted embarrassed, but nicely tried to wiggle away. They showed me two other videos exactly like that. I interrupted them and said, why is that? a reason to not like me. Don't you see what I'm doing? I'm I'm being nice to you when you're doing things to my body like I'm a piece of meat. At one point I said out loud, I feel like I have no say about what other people get to do to my body. And I look over at a worker of the inn, a young girl, and she starts to tear up for some reason. Now I've really had it at this part where I'm screaming, screaming at the top of my lungs in this lobby that I don't understand why everyone's being so rude and cold to me. None of this makes sense. I can't handle the madness of I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. I have some sort of confrontation with a group of employee women who are telling me I deserve it and to fuck off. Stuff like that. So I really tell them off at one point. I was really mad at the stuff that was coming out of my mouth. It was like unlike anything I'd ever said, but just really fuck off. Why? Period. (laughs) I talked to Rome. She doesn't really listen. Like Gabby, sort of just on her phone. I talked to my mom. She's not even listening. Julian, same thing. I'm going crazy. I tell myself I'm just going to go to bed and do my meet and greet and get out of the, the get out. I hate this place. I get up in the morning super early and get ready. I go outside and have a brief talk with one of the women employees who is in a ditch and is patting dirt into some bricks of some sort outside and making like an outside bed. I'm trying to make nice with her, telling her to open in a barbecue place instead of run this in or something. I K N. <laughs> then on my way back from this interaction, I get lost inside this inn for so long. There's a blue tarp with rocks holding like a red, a re- uh, revenue. It says revenue. I think ravine of rotting floor. People and employees are everywhere is large rooms that look like oversized dark bedrooms with 10 or more people living in them. I keep walking and walking past rooms like these with people living in them and I'm just trying to get back to my room when I see this attic door cracked open. No way. Was that the room that everyone talks about? I crack it open more. There's a simple wooden table with five men. 
I did not know and my dad. I walk up the weird steps and confront him. How could he be a part of this elite controlling group? It was him all along. It was real. I overhear them say, yeah, but I just love the idea of her blowing up, you know, as I interrupted them, like they were manipulating the situation downstairs to get our reactions through small televisions that they were watching everything. Holy fucking How shit. could my dad do this? I was having all these racing chicken egg scenarios in my head. Like, did I actually just become successful on YouTube because my dad worked up in the hop, top high order and manipulated it to be so? Or did he get this position as a result? Considering what was going on, I had a feeling it was the former because I just imagined him pushing for his daughter like he liked me a lot. But as soon as I became an object of jealousy, he sabotaged my life, as I said in my head, like he always does. Mind you, no, this is like, I have no idea what this is. <laughs> I wasn't surprised, but was somehow. And he and the others looked up from the table, somewhat surprised, like they didn't know I was coming, but got very quiet. My dad just said, I'm sorry. And then all of a sudden, my brother steps out from the side and says nothing. He has a sad look on his face and just hands me my ID and a book and flips a switch. The attic door opens, and I never realized it had closed. I was so angry that I just found out all the stuff downstairs had been manipulated all of my life essentially had been manipulated by a group of men including my father and brother i wasn't even really paying attention i had heard about this room and i was going to spill the beans i looked down the stairs and couldn't wait to tell rome everything she was going to die when she found out what youtube had been doing <laughs> I looked down and the entire inn had changed. Not a single person was in it. It was like the shining. Everything was sparkling and brand new. The door to the attic was completely sealed and gone. I walked through the inn and there was a weird, there was weird elevator music playing. There was nothing, no one. It was sinking it how real the rumor was why it was a rumor and why you couldn't tell anyone the truth because I had like shifted realities. I look at the book my brother gave me which I don't remember exactly what it was, but I think it was a holy Bible with a small white piece of paper with the old-timey black print, the name of a song on it. I don't recall, but mine was something like yellow mustard on it. And of this, of course, was rumored to be the song that played when you died. I died. It hit me. I died. But it wasn't hitting me because I was sort of just floating out like I was on a moving walkway of this gorgeous new inn. I saw the outside was like glistening new. Everything was. I had some thoughts as I left, like, what happens now? Do I live here now? Am I going to haunt it? What, what do I do? What do I do here now? I don't feel dead at all. And where am I going? I did. I see a window and outside I see a bus. I know I'm getting on that bus. I get outside and I see this kid I knew and my friend Rachel Park. I look at them like, oh, wow, you guys died, too. This kid said, yeah, I guess I was having a really big bathroom orgy is frowned upon at FitCon. <laughs> I forget what Rachel said she did, but they were both along the lines of that VidCon and YouTuber were now just offing people that weren't cooperating. All three of, the, all three of us had the same attitude, almost like not very worried, like we just lost the video game or something. And I remember there being in a, at least this or at least that. We get on the bus because we just somehow know to get on the bus. It's around this time I see Kermit and I get really excited and he jumps up with me on the bus until I realize that this means Kermit died too. <laughs> I get a little sad for a second. <laughs> like, how did Kermit die? Okay. We take a long bus ride and out the window on it, we are watching these classic YouTube videos of people that have all disappeared. I'm assuming all the people that YouTube have gotten rid of, which is what started the rumor in the the first place everyone was going away and never being heard from again i start to recall a video called how youtube got rid of me and i escaped or something like that and recalled the first couple of minutes of him saying he was in italy or something it seemed like trolling clickbaiting like i didn't believe it so i hadn't watched the whole thing anticipating that i'm going to get somewhere and be able to watch it we get off the bus and we are in italy i for some reason open this bag that i pick up when we stop and all of my belongings that are important are neatly organized in it like my passport and everything okay i got with rachel and other kid out the front door Finally on the street on some grass. We don't know where we're going. It's just like we got out of jail. I was still smoking cigarettes in this dream, so I light up one of the cigarettes in my bag. We were walking and talking about what songs 
were that we died to, we were laughing like, oh, that's it. So weird. If I had known, I would have wanted a better song. It seems as if we did not talk about how or when we died, nor did we actually know. I got to thinking about my last video I posted and realized it was like reviewing Bad App's version of Pokemon Go. <laughs> Ugh, that was my last video? Ugh, worse. <laughs> we kept talking and walking when all of a sudden I looked down at my finger and my entire fingertip had melted off and blood was everywhere. I said, oh, guys, remember how we said we were dead, but don't really feel dead. So I'm sure we aren't actually dead. Look what I just did to my finger. I can't feel pain. Just as I say that we're walking past another bus station under construction. One of the workers sees Rachel and picks up her hatchet and throws it directly at Rachel's head and hits her square in the skull. She's laying on the ground trying to get this guy off of her and is working to take the ax out of her head. Like he just wants to keep using it. I'm sort of freaking out. Like, okay, we really, we're really, really dead. So we're like zombies and Kermit is a zombie. I'm a zombie. So you can die again. Holy shit. I see another ax in the ground as I run to throw it at his head. He falls back and dies. Rachel stands up with the ax in her head and rips it out. This is all I remember from this, except that this is why no one can talk because people are now hunting us in this reality like zombies. I was desperately trying to find a way to talk to someone on the other side. How can I find a way people need to expose the the Green Brothers and what they are doing? This is horrible. This is the kind of the end, I think, us in Italy somewhere, realizing that everyone that sees us is hunting us. We are dead. We're never going back. That's at the end. There was some loose stuff here. I just don't remember now. That's the whole thing. Wow. Right? Fucking wow. Right? What is that? I have to sneeze. <sighs> Fucking wow. <laughs> what the fuck was that? And A how, dream. And how is that... That's like that's what dreams are like. Like they make no sense. But th- like even I'm the just beginning where it's like how you remembered all that and wrote all of it well, down. Well, because I was like writing it while while I'm like half awake, half asleep, and I was like, I'm just gonna write down exactly what happened in the dream as I remembered it. You must have been really like half asleep because the only way you can remember that many details is if you're half asleep. Well, yeah, and that's why it's like not written like in a, any sort of way that anyone can understand. But even that the beginning when I when I preface it, shit. like, you know, when you're dreaming and you already understand the context, but like this was the like always murmurs about what happens to people that disappear from online, like they get reset. Like even that's the first sentence that I wrote. But that was like the whole context of the dream is like you're living in alternate reality YouTube land where like people are disappearing from the internet but like you can't convey it because that's just the context of your dream yo that shit was way crazier than i thought it was gonna be so well i guess what was so crazy to me in the dream because i do remember dreaming it was that i had just you know everyone was like so terrible to me and then i go upstairs i find the secret room and like people are there to just sort of like erase your existence like as a person like well, from the it's planet. Like, it's like the men upstairs are like are controlling all the pieces. They're like the god and everyone else downstairs, you think you know who they are, but they really are just a piece of a you know, like a pawn. Yeah, it's in like a manipulation. I just couldn't like I can't express the feeling <clears throat> of being like realizing that you're dead and being like, I wanna tell someone on the other side yeah. what happened, but you can't. Fuck. That is so crazy, man. Right? I'm like, I'm like getting the the shivers right now hearing that. Like that's that's crazy. Well, I mean, it's not quite what I remember, but I do like uh, even when I was like, I don't remember what it was. I do remember opening an attic door and being like, "There's people up there." I mean, I've had dreams where I'm like eighty percent sure I'm dead, and like I've in the dream proceeded with what to do next like like you said like you want to tell someone or like if i'm dead like i want to i want to see what this means or where i am or who i have with me or how did i die i remember dreams like that but it's just that's so vivid and like it brings me into dreamland hearing that like that's what my dream yeah that's like everything about that dream is oh man fucking fucking crazy and like i know exactly what you, you know i don't know exactly what, but i think you know i think i know what you're feeling when you have that dream right just, like it makes no sense it's like completely <clears throat> ridiculous and made up but yeah. like holy shit you kind of just blew my mind 
Why? Because I, I did not think it was going to be that. I thought it was going to be a lot more jumbled and kind of nonsensical. That was like, that was like, you know, that was, that was like, it was, I can understand where that sort of stemmed from in your brain. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. And I think that's what's crazy about it. It just, it feels profound. It doesn't feel like just a bunch of nonsensical happenings, which a lot of my dreams feel like, or at least I remember them. Well, I mean, it was kind of nonsensical. It was like, I woke up and was like, what the fuck was that? You know what I mean? It's not like it made perfect sense. No, but it made a lot more sense than I, it made a lot more sense than I I expected. Well, I think if you really try it, like, you know, a lot of days when you wake up, you can't really remember what you're dreaming about or it wasn't anything that was worth writing down. But like, if you have one of those mornings where you wake up and you remember your dream, if you just wake up and try to write it down as as fast as you can, like I challenged myself when I wrote that too. I was like, I want to write down as much detail as I can about everything because I know it's not going to make sense to me when I read it back sometimes. If so you, you you purposely detailed everything more than you needed to. Yeah, but like if you try and do it, like I'm surprised. I don't remember writing that much. Like it's long. That was long. <laughs> yeah, I, I like was kind of blown away. I'm. I challenge you that if you try to do it and then read it back some other time, yeah, that I think you would be capable of writing more than you think. Do you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. a, a dream journal is sort of like I've done that before, where it's like sentences or like you know just the topic. But if you really challenge yourself to like write down everything that you remember, yeah, I think you'd be surprised how much you can remember in that moment. Yeah, you know. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that uh, that was wild. That was fucking wild. I I kind of I'm I'm just I'm kind of a little speechless. I feel like I have dreams like that all the time, where at the end of it you have some sort of like realization, but I don't write them down. Yeah. I see. I don't I don't remember this dream. I wrote it down in in September, and I'm like I don't even know what's gonna happen. Or I feel. I mean, it's obviously way shorter. This yeah, is but the that's whole thing. still pretty long. Now I want to hear yours. Your turn. Fuck. All right. Don't compare the two because this is probably not nearly as crazy. All right. I'm just going to read word for word because I don't know what most of this means. Dream journal. (laughs) Dream one. Uh, September, September 3rd. When did Um, you write this? Like, were you still half sleeping? No, I wrote it at 1203. So I had, Uh, unless I, unless I woke up at 1203 because it might've been a late night. It's possible. Um, Okay. At a condo type place that isn't mine. I'm sitting or something with Marlon. The house is nice and there's a bunch of people there when we are leaving. I try to flag down an Uber because I didn't have my car, but he didn't know where to pick us up. So I got in his car and he tries. Oh my God. I just got a flash of remembering the stream. Holy shit. Weird. Okay. Oh fuck. All right. Um, I try to flag down an Uber, but, um, he, he didn't know where to pick us up. So I got in his car and he tries to drive me home alone without Marlon. Um, I say, please go back and get Marlon. He says, okay, whatever you want. But he was very shifty. So I said, I'd like to take a different car. Thanks. Next scene. We're out back at the backyard of a small house sitting <laughs> at a so table. That's so true of how dreams work though. Just like there's no closure. It just goes to the next part I, of the dream I, now. <laughs> I very distinctly remember. Oh my God. This is like fucking crazy. I very distinctly remember getting in that car. It was like a town car Mm -hmm. and we were going the wrong way on the freeway and I was without Marlon and I was like, yo, I need to get out of this car Yeah, and then cut. Um, uh, so we were in the backyard of a small house sitting at a table. I had just seen some white belt get promoted in the yard, the blue belt. (laughs) So this is this, uh, this is a dojitsu dream. Um, by September though, I had my blue belt. So this is, um, then out of nowhere spawns a miniature marbles, <laughs> like the size of an iPhone five tiny. <laughs> and at the same time spawns a miniature cat. The cat was white. We didn't know where these things came from or what to do with them. So we tried to take care of them, but, be, but they began to bite us. <laughs> One of the people I was with dropped either marbles or the cat a normal distance, but they broke their arm. <laughs> then marbles bit me and held on like a snake. I let go, and the cat ate marbles. Oh, my God, Julian! <laughs> no! 
it wasn't real marbles. It was miniature marbles. I Don't worry. know, but still. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. This is fucked. Next scene. I'm trying to take Jenna to the snow mountain to ski or something. We are in a Jeep. Fat chance. We take a wrong turn, so we have to back out of a very difficult tiny hill. Turns out my mom is there and tries to talk talk to us, but I'm not having it. <laughs> <laughs> not now, Mom. Um, we are then at dinner with my family. My mom being short with me and me to her. Marlon being especially annoying and backhanded. Then Marlon follows Jenna and myself to a restaurant. I thought we were already at dinner. Uh, he's third wheeling our dinner date, so I keep telling him to leave. He won't, so I keep getting mad. Marlon? Yeah. Then, this annoying dude is bothering our table, and I'm so mad at this point from my mom acting like that and my brother acting like that, so I snap on the guy and grapple him and choke him unconscious. <laughs> oh my god, Julian! As I return to my table, people are thanking me. A few minutes later, that guy wakes up and is deliriously walking about the restaurant trying to find his friends. He finds them, ends up on a motorcycle, and somehow gets a rope from his bike caught on a giant massive truck in the road. We follow them to, par- to the parking garage where there is a shootout, and Jenna and I survive. Like, what the fuck oh was that last sentence? Oh, my God. I think I shot one guy, but the rest had <laughs> killed each other. Except for one guy remained. At the end, he said, shoot in the air and pretend you're dead. So I did, and lay there pretending I'd been shot while he did too. I think I woke up then. <laughs> oh, see, that sounds like a dream. Like a, that's how dreams work. You know what I mean? Fuck. Fuck. That that's like a full night's sleep that you just described. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yes. Like how you like that. Mine was right in the morning when I woke up, so I remembered that because it was so visually there. Yeah. But that sounds like what you dreamt from like three a.m. to like seven a.m. <laughs> like three hours of dreaming, like totally different shit. Fuck. That's crazy. See, the we weird thing is, we should do this more often because now I want to read more dreams. Well, well, here's the thing, I. I'm convinced, like, a lot of the times I'm convinced when I'm half asleep waking up and thinking about a dream, I'm convinced, like, this is stupid. I'm yeah, not going to write it down. Stupid. And sleep sounds nicer, yeah. right? So I don't do it. But if I really keep the notebook by my, bre- my bed and really do it, I'm totally down to do these more often because this is fucking profound. Like, the, reading the first bit of that dream and then all of a sudden, like, bringing myself it. back into what that's it felt crazy. like, that's crazy. Isn't it? There's nothing like that sensation. Yeah. I don't even, like... The last scene where he, the guy comes up to me and he's like, shoot in the air and pretend like you got shot. Yeah. I remember that scene. That's crazy. It's fucking weird. That's really crazy. It's fucking weird. Your you guys happy funny. now? You grappled someone. Are you someone. happy? I grappled someone. You grappled someone unconscious at a restaurant and then people thanked you. Yeah. And then he was just like drunk <laughs> from getting <laughs> this, choked out. That poor that guy. His rope got caught on a truck on the highway. He got fucked. <laughs> I love how Marlon is just third wheeling. <laughs> I love how you're just casually driving down the freeway in the wrong direction, and then you're just in a backyard. Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Fuck. Well, uh, I know I want to do more of these now. Well, like, according to those dream things, like, there's no way to analyze our dreams, really. I, I mean, you know what? That's what you guys do. Well, okay, Analyze so like my my dream, I died in my dream, I guess, but I didn't feel like I died. It was only a realization like that I died. already dead. And then... Like, there is no, like, what you do in, well, after you're dead. What does that yeah. mean? Yeah. What the fuck does that mean? But what's weird is, like, my dream had nothing to do with guns or or, or killing people and then just somehow automatically ends with gunfights. Like, yeah. I don't understand that. I don't know. I don't know. Well, this, leave us some of your dreams in the comments. Leave us some of your <laughs> dreams, but also if you if you feel like you have any idea what our dreams mean, enlighten us. Um, and we will definitely do more of these, right? Yeah, for sure. It's fun. This is fun. Yeah. This is, I kind of want to go dream now. <laughs> oh, if you uh, if you want better dreams, take ZMA. It helps with dreams. Oh my God, be careful though. Be careful. The first night Consult that you take it, it'll be better after the first night. ZMA. Is, Why don't you describe a, what ZMA, ZMA is? ZMA is a supplement. 
um, made up of zinc, magnesium, and vitamin B6. Yeah, so it's um, not like a sleep aid. There's no melatonin. Aid. It's nothing like that. Julian takes it at night for repairing muscles and things it's, like it's that. Not, it's not specifically for repairing muscles. There's you know nothing in saying. it. Yeah, but there's nothing in it that innately repairs muscles. It's more of uh, replenishing. And it's generally for men, but women can take it too. It's generally, um, it replenishes what an active male loses throughout the day of mm. being an active male so that they can sleep deeper, sleep better, and get more rested in the morning. So if you take ZMA and you react well to it, you'll wake up feeling way more rested than you yeah. would have. Uh, and, it's and, true, though. But that's like the, the stuff that's in it is not anything different than what you find in like the, a multivitamin for some reason, but like knocks you at the, night. It's the interaction between yeah. the specific vitamins. It that's like what knocks happens. you yeah. at the, night. The, the, the first couple nights that I took sits. it, I was like, good fucking night. Yeah. It knocks you. I remember the first few nights I dreams. took it, too. It knocks you good, makes you wake up, feel nice and rested. But lately I found the Snack brand, which Snack is the company created by the founder of ZMA. His name is uh, Victor Kant. He created ZMA and uh, the company Snack. Their brand of ZMA is something I've recently been in, in love vegan. with. It's vegan. But I've been recently in love with because it really fucks with your dreams and I like it. <laughs> It, it has an effect. Like, uh, if I don't take it and then I take it one dream, night, baby. I'll notice. Then go dream, baby. Anyway, thank you guys for hanging out with us for another podcast. Yeah, this this was fun. a really good one. I feel weird and embarrassed. I feel nice and weird and vulnerable. Right? It's weird telling someone you dream. Yeah. Well, props to you. I mean, yours was way longer than mine. It's fucking weird. Uh, check out sponsors in the in the link below. Thank the, you, Mia thank, thank you, Mia We appreciate y'all. We'll see you guys next week on another podcast. Bye. Bye. Hopefully by now the Patriots have already won. <laughs> Love you guys. Love you. Bye.